Daniel Rana and welcome to FM Tahiti. Hope you're all doing well. It's been a little while since, um, well, in terms of game time, it's been a little while since I recorded the last video, um, which was the Super Cup. So as you can see, if you didn't watch that one, uh, we lost uh, to Sporting Chance 2-0 with our kind of second string, with everyone being away on internationals for the very last point. And... Since then, I've played about I say play about four. I played four league games. You can see on the table, I've played four league games. Um, one four, goal difference of ten. Sort of getting ahead of the, the pack slightly, although there's this kind of group of four uh, here. Ish chance kind of on the outside. I reckon they'll come back into it. Um, also played a cup match. So we beat Papite about five three, something ridiculous like that. Let's have a look. Yeah, 5-3. And then we've also won two of these uh, Mutineer Pride trophy matches, putting us at the top. So we beat Noruta and the Rapper Feral Cats. Um, and I thought I'd just come back for the next match, which is against Takaro Terrors. Take a bit of break and then come uh, for the second half, do the, this quarter final. Just so I could have a, a video out, a bit of a chat. Um, because obviously what we're mainly just trying to do is get to December when we'll have the Club World Championship um, draw on the start of the um, competition because we're right at the very beginning, we're in the kind of qualifying round, we should be fairly early, we should be playing in that, that December. So I'm going to play against Takara Terrors and what brought me back to the Takara Terrors is um, they're newly promoted, first time in the Premiership I think. Show me on the profile. Yeah, first time in the Premiership they've managed to make their way all the way up from the gold. Um, like the badge, the kit's a little bit crazy. Um, not my finest work, but it's alright. To play at the Black Pearl Park in Takaroa, I just thought it'd be interesting because we've not played them that often. If we have, it's been in a cup. Um, so I thought we'd, we'd give it a go and let's give you another opportunity to see some of our players before we get towards the end. See Yannin and Gerard and the rest in action. So we've got 4 4 2 against their 4 2 uh, 2 2. I guess it's still 4 4 2, it's just um, withdrawn. We've got Yannin, Gerard. Beauvalet, McCormack, Spearling, and Bell. Andre's injured, and Dalloway's coming back from injury. And then we've got Lamb, Hook, uh, Flood, Janik, and McIntyre across the back. So this should be, hopefully, a nice easy match for us. So they've not been doing too badly. They're not in the relegation zone or anything like that. Um, they're actually uh, sort of making a claim for mid-table. The Corollers, who also came up with them, are bottom of the table. Uh, so that's not as... There we go, a penalty. Someone just elbowed, shoved over Gerard and Yannick's going to take it. So yeah, the Corollers aren't doing as well. We still, they've all got time to kind of... The table will change. But I have a feeling the Corollers are probably going to go straight back down. But I'm hopeful the, ter uh, the Terrors will stay up. If they do stay up, then it means I'm not planning on taking them over. Um, anytime soon, I don't think, as much as I like the the badge and the kit. Uh, just because if they've already made it and they're doing well, I'd like to bring up another smaller side. So we've got more sort of variation, more sides in the Premiership that aren't just, you know, Tahiti Society uh, sides. The national team's got a chance of improving across the board. Um, I mean, we did win the Atoll Championship with Marquesa, so that's all right. But I think that was because of our intervention as a human manager rather than the pool being any good and the management of Tahiti and the Bass Islands and Australia Islands being pretty poor. Um, missed out a lot of good players, for example. So it'd be good to get another smaller side up. And they seem to be kind of holding their own. Like we've not been, like status-wise, it looks like we're kind of dominating them. Um, the shots at least, but we've not had a huge amount of like really deadly looking chances or anything like that. He's offside though, isn't he? Yeah. He came back from an offside position. Um, <coughs> sorry, but he was originally offside, so never mind. 
in the end, we didn't replace um, Pons. We just went for Bell, gave him a chance, and he's he's doing okay. He's not as dangerous as Pons was. So Pons would go on those runs, he'd drive forwards, he'd create space either by his run or by a pass, whereas uh, Bell seems to be much more about just getting in a position to cross. I've not changed his instructions or anything, so it just seems to be partly because of his kind of attributes, and I guess partly because he's like his own like traits, for example. Um, I might have a look and see what Pons were, because they were quite good. They were a good combination. I think it's always something worth bearing in mind as well. You can have a tactic that works, and then you change the personnel, and suddenly it's not working. And the reason could be not because there's an issue with the tactic, not because um, tap in for Jan in there. And it might not be because anything to do with the tactic. It might not be because the play is worse, like attribute-wise. They might be a really good player still. But it could be because they've got a different set of traits. So, for example, if one of Pond's traits was gets forward whenever possible, runs with ball, hugs the um, byline or hug, uh, you know, cuts inside or whatever, that will change the way he works. I have a feeling that's probably the case. I might actually look immediately after this match, uh, just so I can, hopefully, I've not checked this before, so hopefully I can demonstrate what I mean. If it turns out there's absolutely no difference between them, it probably just means that Bell's not as good. Pick some subs, get weight on, just try and keep him match fit even though he's not going to be first choice. And I'm going, we're 2-0 up, I'm going to showboat and put Tamangara and Bar on. Uh, Gerard and Yanin up, you know, banging them in as much as they were at the start of last season. They've had a much slower start, it took them about two or three games before they started scoring, and to fair Yanin's on like his fifth goal of the season already, so when he's, you know, he's he's picking up the pace, I guess. But they didn't; they were quiet for the first few games. And I guess for Yannin, that's because he was tired from the international duty, and Gerard was kind of tired from starting the season and being the main striker for the first match. I guess. I mean, that was a good finish there by Beauvale. But he's just offside again. Beauvale's are kind of, yeah. So many people outside there. But is our kind of backup winger. He's our second choice. And then Manuel's third choice behind him. Um, and he's okay. He's just not as good as Dalloway. Go on, Bar. He took it down well, but then just didn't get anywhere. There we go. So we did dominate in the end. Tapas Jack. <laughs> my favourite player. I, just, I, I need to add him to my... Um, Shortlist. If I can buy Tapas Jack in the future, I am. Um, yes, yeah, so they didn't do particularly well, but we didn't completely destroy them. We are kind of reigning champions. And yeah, so let's look at um, what's his face? Where is he? Cameron Bell. Not see. Play tricks. There we go. Shoots from distance. Kind of explains why he's not getting as, as close. And then if we look for Paul Pons. There he is. He has... No play traits. So, completely undermining and destroying my uh, potential argument there. It's just because he's better. Bell. I think the overall point still stands. The, the traits make a difference, uh, but it's just that he's better in this case. Never mind. Um, interestingly, Paul Pons, who's still welcome to me, um, is wanted by Al Rayed in Saudi Arabia, the professional league, who have like players worth money. Player, real player, old real players. Chelsea Angel. Why do I recognise that name? I don't recognise that name, that's a massive lie. So there's I mean that would be a big step up for him. Um and yeah, we can't really compete with that. Right, so I'm gonna pause the recording now and I'm gonna come back for that quarter final match and I'll chew your ear off about something else.
and we're back for the Taha match, but beforehand, um, let me let me tell you a story. So after the um, see part of the story after that Terrors match where Yanin got his brace, that made him the all-time top goal scorer for the Rurity Humpbacks with 83 uh, goals, beating um, Semi Gerard by one goal. So he had 82. Um, Jared had held the record for a bit. So after that match, uh, Yanin picked up a knock and he wasn't able to play the next match. So up front, I had played Jared and I played Luca Bar. And clearly, Jared had a kind of hold my beer kind of moment. And he went on to score not only a double hat trick, he got himself the six goals, but that first hat trick was a perfect hat trick. Header, right foot, left foot, in that order for him. And yeah, it's like some kind of switch got flicked. He realised he was no longer the top goal scorer and had this opportunity with Yanin not around to um, just really ruin the Sky Brights <laughs> day. Um, so he got, yeah, double hat trick, which I think is the first time I've had a player get double hat trick in this save, definitely. I think, yeah, beforehand, four goals was the most any player had scored in a single match for me. Um, so yeah, he got himself that. And then the next match afterwards, I played them both up front together, Yannin and Gerard, and none of them. Neither of them scored. So currently, Gerard is on 88, and um, Yannin is on 83. Let's see what happens when we play Taha in the quarterfinals. Um, Yannin's still not 100% fit. But I kind of feel bad now about not playing him. I kind of feel like if I don't play him, then I'm just stacking the uh, the odds in Gerard's favour. I think overall, in the long run, Yannin is going to just outscore Gerard. There's no other way around it, I think. Gerard had the head start and he's got a good goal tally. Uh, but Yannin's just more... He's, because he's not had the head start, but he's still competing with him. He's just more prolific. Like last season when he got 54 compared to um, Gerard's 30-something. So we're against Taha on their sand pitch, which obviously means, I don't know if he shows up in the videos at the end, but all the white lines um, kind of flash. It's not a good start, is it? It's not the end of the world for me if we don't... Um, get through to the final because we'll probably be gone before the final's played. It's just a uh, few matches for me to have to deal with. I would like to put them in a position where they could do as well as possible there. Get some more silverware for the club. Even if it's not me winning it in the final match. I think we're starting to run out of steam a bit though. We had a really good start to the season. Um, we're still unbeaten bar the Super Cup. We've been playing well, but it's just we have to have a blip here and there. And there are lots of say, lots of beatable teams in the the cup left, but because we've won it in the past and because we're champions, we've I think we've already demonstrated we can beat most teams. But there's um, Huheen, Bora Bora, Taha that we're against. Um, all, all good teams that expect to have a good chance of getting to the final. Although apparently in the latest scores, Mayo are winning, which is a bit unexpected, especially against the Eels. Not doing as well as we normally do. No shots at all. It's like the strikers have just decided, no, that's it. Good enough goals now. I bring on Bar for um, Yanin. If Yanin's not particularly fit or sharp in comparison, he's the one who's going to have to come off, I think. Andre McCormick saved us in the last match against Moria. They scored the goals that rescued the draw for us. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's offside, isn't he? He's not sharp yet. He's just desperate to get some more goals. Go on, one of you. Ah, oh, so close. It's a mystic ball there. You've come into a bit more now, but it might be a bit late. Luca Bar, Dalloway for Beauvalet. She's not had any clear cut chances according to the uh, stats. One half chance, which I guess is the one where we slammed it against the uh, bar. Taha have been looking a little bit better than us. I think that's probably fair to say. It's an all round lacklustre performance. Try spearing on. Quarterback. Might be another loss for us in a cup as well. So losses this season have all been in cups. Unless something amazing happens here, but I have a feeling this is the kind of end of match highlight. Maybe Gerard can get a super hat trick. There we go. A loss that says out the cup. It's fine. Do you want to win it anyway? Yeah, I am pretty disappointed for it. It would have been nice to, to line up some cup finals for someone else. Uh, but who he made it back? Bora Bora. Um, who else? Have we got... Yeah, got Terahi and Tetero. So I imagine Tetero will get through. Uh, that's, that's actually quite a, a good final four of Bora Bora, Taha, Huahin and Tetero. A few title winners there, a few cup winners already there. So that's a decent... Decent package. So I'll end there and we'll come back um, a little later on. It's probably maybe towards December or the end of December. We'll see. But I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ooh.